want to say thank you to Athens because it's you guys who made such a big group feel like still a uh, friendly small group uh, like this this tight group feel in such big community it's 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 incredible yeah there's there's like we do have a large APN community now but every time you go into the discord it still feels like friendly it still feels like everyone knows each other because the community is really active everyone just keeps talking with each other and getting to know each other a bit better and I think it, at the end, like, right, I think we're probably the most cohesive deck in Star Atlas at the moment because I I, I'm, I don't see most of the other guilds, of course. I'm not in their guilds. I, I have no idea. But it just feels like we are super tight-knit. And if we had, like, a boss raid, I'm sure we would be, like, the first deck to be able to, like, finish this boss. That's what I feel. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's me again, Metaverse Explorer. I'm back this time with another episode of Star Atlas, this time with Funcracker and Prometheus, the top leaders in a fear at the moment. So we've got a few topics we're going to talk about. I'll let them introduce themselves first. Ronald, uh, Funcracker, how are you going? I'm doing fine, mate. Thank you very much for asking. And um, yeah, how are you doing? I don't think an introduction is necessary for me, but... Uh, <laughs> Everyone knows you. Of- Exactly, one of the founders of Avia, um, enthusiast, uh, stratless since the beginning almost. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, Prometheus, how are you going? How's your day been? Good, thanks. Uh, just woke up for, for this interview. <laughs> so, <laughs> just woke up. Well, uh, we'll get a coffee for you and start your day beautifully yes. with us today. So you guys watching at home, we have a few topics to, t- uh, to talk about. The one and most important thing is AFIA has now turned one. So congratulations to everyone in AFIA. If you're watching any of these videos, you are part of us. Uh, happy anniversary, all AFIANs. Um, also on top of that, we'll talk about what the current market is doing, um, what the AFIA uh, marketplace might be uh, releasing very soon and four to six announcements. So I guess uh, uh, Funcracker Prometheus will dive right in, right? We'll talk about um, AFIA turning one. What a tremendous occasion. Um, I'm super happy to be part of AFIA. Can you give us a, a little brief outline about the birth of AFIA? How did it actually come to be? What, how, how did it happen? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, well, I'll just talk from my perspective uh, first. Prometheus can do his, of course. So I mean, I when I when I got when I learned about the game, which was right before the rebirth uh, campaign kicked off, um, I became super passionate and active on the server. Uh, spent a lot of time there, uh, reading and also answering questions at some point. Um, and initially, it was not the intent to set up a guild. Uh, I have set up guilds in the past. It's a lot of work, very yeah. time consuming. Uh, and my life, of course, uh, has got busier over the years, as is for most people the case. Um, but at some point, I did reach out to Prometheus because he was saying very smart things uh, <laughs> on the status Discord that resonated with me. And we just got to talk um, and about our mutual, mutual passion for the project. And at some point, we did broach the topic of, uh, of guilds and how these could evolve uh, given a play and own slash earn uh, foundation. Um, while we also confessed towards another that we were actually both, it, the, the idea of setting up a guild popped up, but we were both not really feeling like we have the time or we can do it justice. Yep. Um, but it's a big endeavor. Yeah, as we, as, yeah, as we both had the same ideas, we kind of at some point decide, okay, we just have to do this. Um, for, for numerous reasons, let's not go too deep into that, but uh, we just had good ideas. We figured, um, we, yeah, we, 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 had, we spoke the same language. We, we had, it resonated, it worked. So uh, we teamed up and uh, the rest is history. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Is it the same story for you as well, Prometheus? Did you see it the same way? Were you scouting him out? <laughs> we gave you a big head. We say, he's saying like you were saying lots of smart things. Uh, yeah, basically, uh... Definitely, at the beginning, uh, Star Atlas Discord was not very active, and uh, Funcracker definitely stood out. Well, apart from me, of course, as a knowledgeable person, <laughs> there, um, a knowledgeable lister. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, it's um, 
it's crazy to think that it was more than a year ago, actually. Yeah, uh, that flies. Was, but yeah, it was it was really all about passion for the project, trying to learn as much as possible about the project, trying to educate other people about the project because many people just didn't know much, didn't understand much what's going on. Yeah, and yeah. like there was a lot of confusion about everything related to reverse campaign at the time and uh, plans and um, Stratlas team disseminated information in through various sources so that if you're not following all of the sources you're missing out on stuff right and, uh, so just helping the team to to share the information to to newcomers to to help them with their issues with website for example when it came up it was um, important part of day actually for me and for Funcracker and we just uh, saw each other doing the same stuff and uh, we talked of course <laughs> as a result yeah you got together well as a, as a new member like when I didn't first start with Star Atlas when it started right I came in I think at Rebirth Poster number two I just barely missed the first one and I found mm -hmm. like AFIA's uh, resources super helpful uh, help me learn serum markets, how to get a ship myself. So as one of the newcomers that you were just talking about here and providing information, thank you very much. And I'm sure a lot of other AFIANs probably watching this video feel the same way. So just want to say thank you very much. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll transition now to like, uh, it's been a year since that. You, as you said, you know, time, time has flown. What has been the process of building AFIA out? Has it been going according to your visions? Uh, have we been achieving what, what, you, what you sought out to achieve with AFIA? Oh, that's a fun question, actually. So mm. um, <laughs> this ties very much into the timeline set by the team, right? So when we got in, when we when, when we started Avia, the timeline for the game and the releases was uh, expedited compared to the current one. Yes, uh, quite a bit. Yes. So we figured we would not really have the time to do things into super depth because we had to hurry up. Yeah, uh, to make sure we were ready, um, and of course those plans did not pan out the way the team at that point in time uh, proposed. Um, so we had more time. Uh, we, we learned at some point. Uh, and the longer we've been here, the more clear it has become we have more time. Yeah. So uh, as, as the progress, we, of course, we grew in members, uh, but also our plans evolved. Uh, we had more time. We had vague plans at first, let's say. I mean, not super vague, but more vague. Uh, and over time, they have more crystallized and taken shape. And Copa was actually the very first reveal of some of those plans uh, after being cooked up for, for uh, yeah, almost a year. Uh, and those were even new to some of our members, uh, or I have to say some of those plans were even new to our members. Yeah. Um, so everything has just matured more and more. Um, um, and the good thing as well, uh, we, we learned very uh, early on that Solana, of course, is a brand new chain. Yeah. Okay, we're now one year further, but when we, started, uh, when we started out and lots of potential, yes, but also meant that a lot of functionality and tools were just not there yet that yes. we would have to rely on to set up the DAO tokens and whatnot. So uh, it also been a blessing that we could slow down a bit because as I mentioned, our plans could mature better. We could uh, spend more time uh, solidifying those, but we also have more time waiting for some tools to arrive. Uh, and we're still uh, weekly looking at what's happening in the space. Yep. Uh, I know you've been to Athens DAO recently, and I have to I have checked all the recordings uh, uh, of that event because that stuff is just crazy important to us as a guild. Uh, yeah, to, I mean, DAO, DAO infrastructure, we've been missing it in Solana for a long time. And I think now it's starting to like take actual root and trying to get the ecosystem spurring and going. Um, and that's yeah. what a few of the people at uh, Solana Hacker House X and Athens DAO were trying to do. Um, th thanks for that. I, I want to pivot over to Prometheus. I mean, Prometheus uh, ha has the same question goes to you. Have we kind of been achieving what you've wanted your vision of a fear to be? Have we have we gotten there? Uh, uh, do you think we had enough time? Are we still planning some things out? Well, um, first thing, of course, there are, there are more things to come. Uh, it's always a process. It's not some some end goal. Yep. But in general, like if it actually really outperformed any ideas ahead about the guild when the, that we were starting out because when, when we were talking and um, 
creating the guild, it was always more about some friendly group of individuals that just work together. And you usually have those as very small groups, just that like 20, 50 people yeah. who just talk daily with each other and Smoke um, movie, yeah. work together. And that's that was my expectation. I was thinking maybe like 100 people who would want to be with us to, um, to just cooperate, uh, to have the same vision and so on. Uh, somehow it ended up being right now it's 1.78 thousand. So it's uh, what about 18 times bigger than my <laughs> your estimate, yeah. Target. Yeah. Well, so, so that's outperformance. <laughs> well, you have nothing, no one else to blame but you guys because you're ter terrific leaders, you're amazing leaders, and so people are attracted to you guys, and so that's one of the reasons I came. Um, so uh, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. But but you've well, been a catalyst as well, mate. Don't don't forget about that. Of course, after yeah. you've joined and embraced AFR and spread the gospel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, right <laughs> right now, yeah. Like we got a logo down here below. So you know, AFR for the for the win. We all love AFR. Um, all uh, right. So I, cool. So, so, sorry. Uh, I just want to say thank you to AFNs because it's you guys who made such a big group feel like still. Sm uh, s friendly small group uh, like this this tight group feel in such big community it's 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 incredible yeah this this like we do have a large afian community now but every time you go into the discord it still feels like friendly it still feels like everyone knows each other because the community is really active everyone just keeps talking with each other and getting to know each other a bit better and i think it, at the end like right i think we're probably the most cohesive DAC in star atlas at the moment because I, I, I'm, I don't see most of the other guilds, of course. I'm not in their guilds. I, I have no idea. But it just feels like we are super tight-knit. And if we had, like, a boss raid, I'm sure we would be, like, the first deck to be able to, like, finish this boss. That's what I feel. Yes. 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 Agreed. Yeah. I mean, of course, I, cannot, I, I don't see the, others one, the other ones either. So other guilds will probably uh, contest this. But it feels absolutely like you're describing. Uh, we have a super tight-knit knit guild, of course members have a few members have uh, gone into hibernation with a downturn of the market Expected. but other ones joined and it still feels uh wonderful like a family uh yeah yeah right on man um so i wonder do you have any comments about uh, any uh, uh other comments before we get to the current market uh, situation with four to six and the marketplace do you want to talk about uh um afia turning one any other comments for us well, um, because we're turning one, uh, we figure we want to uh, commemorate that uh, a bit longer than just the one day. So we have plans to uh, celebrate uh, a whole week. Um, oh. And uh, we're going to do that by doing that, which we already are known for, sharing knowledge. So um, starting uh, today on Monday, when this will be published, um, we're going to, uh, yeah, roll out uh, additional guides, uh, interviews, uh, and just good stuff for the community. Yep. Every day, a little bit more. Um, can you just share? To reach out can and, you share who you're uh, going to be interviewing at all? Yes, uh, we're going to do an interview with uh, Santi, your favorite uh, community lead. Hey. Uh, and we have an interview with uh, Michael Wagner coming up. That will okay. be live in AMA format, and people will be able to join and ask questions while we're doing that so uh amazing yep amazing that's awesome now i i, I personally want to know are you guys going to go hard on uh michael uh Schwagner, or are you going to go give him some softballs both both right okay. we're, we're, we're nice people we also give him the softballs of course to just warm him up slowly Entice and, him in, change, and then you whack change him. Of pace but uh <laughs> no i mean we love what the team is doing of course but yeah yeah we're we're right we are uh, uh critical uh, also sometimes as is known uh, or we are all, all, always critical but in a sense that uh, if something goes like uh, in, in a way we don't like then we also call that out uh, and I can imagine that we definitely have a few questions uh, for Michael that yeah uh, are related to that so I think I think that's important <laughs> so I have a good robust interview you have to have like good both sides of the coin right you know the critique take it with the good feedback as well um, and awesome. the good thing is, if people if people don't like the questions we are asking, they can chime in and ask questions themselves. So uh, awesome. if they feel it, we're not doing a good job, then it's up to you guys. Uh, 
yeah, to join yeah. in and uh, ask the hard, the really hard questions. Yeah, it, um, can people submit any questions at the moment in uh, the AFIA Discord at all? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, did not yet set that up, but probably absolutely will do that. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, there's still time yeah. until the uh, um, Michael Wagner interview is actually done. Yeah. Uh, as as a live AMA, and It'll I'm sure people will week. be able to chat in the chat anyway, and you'll be able to pick questions. Yeah. We're going to fix that for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So, uh, can you uh, give us a bit more brief? So, you're going to be doing interviews with Michael. Um, you're going to be releasing a few more guides and updating some previous guides. Any more insight into that? Any like that? Uh, we recently released the firepower guide, which showed us uh, how strong or like how much firepower your ship had. Um, and uh, to anyone that might be watching, you should know that the firepower is just a, an estimate at the moment. It's not your combat score from Star Atlas. Firepower is only a small sector factor of your actual uh, ship performance because you might have a freight and it's not good for firepower, you know? So a guide like that, are you guys going to be releasing others or updating pre um, already made ones? Uh, sorry, want to jump in before Van Kerker answers that question. As part of the event, we'll also have um, four to six events that you probably have heard about. Yeah. So that's, that's a nice event to have within our anniversary week. Yeah. But Fabricator can now continue about, <laughs> about the guides as well that will be uh, releasing during the week. No, so yeah, so um, the firepower um, article overview table, however you want to call it, um, it, it we have plans for that, uh, but they will not be uh, revealed this week. Ah. This week, we're really primarily going to uh, look into some guides that are missing uh, and some information. So we... We just looked at the guides we currently have, and there's just some uh, gaping holes. We like to be the potential one-stop shop for any new uh, status enthusiast to basically be able to learn everything they need to uh, in order to get up to speed and uh, at this point in time, get their ships listed in score. And in the future, of course, participate in Scream and whatnot. So uh, we're, th that is more the area where you can think, uh, can think of. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so you, you guys heard it here, right? Uh, look out for the week. Uh, we're going to be having new guides coming out, new interviews with uh, Santi, Wagner, and some other information being released as well. Awesome. So let's let's uh, move along. We're uh, 15 minutes, 16 minutes into the interview. Let's talk about current market uh, situation, right? So we've got two topics that we can broach here, which is the new marketplace that will be releasing very soon, and then four to six as well. So maybe we can talk to uh, about uh, the marketplace, Prometheus. You're more of the analytical side. Can you um, give us an explanation or a brief of what you see has happened uh, in the markets uh, just because of the marketplace announcement? Yes, so um, this new marketplace coming out, um, Star Atlas team will be removing their orders from Serum Dex, which is uh, now marketplace that is going away. Yep. And we'll, we'll place those orders on the new marketplace uh, through um, blockchain programs that they uh, themselves created. Yeah. Uh, so while Serum is a standard Solana infrastructure for just DEX uh, trading. Now, uh, this doesn't mean that those uh, Serum markets are going away. Um, uh, in my understanding, they will stay there. It's just that they will disappear. Access to them will disappear from Star Atlas website, and yeah. instead, uh, Star Atlas website will direct to the new marketplace. So. Trading will still be possible on that one, but they will become much less liquid. Yes, that's right. So like the, the actual infrastructure is still there. You can access that marketplace from Dex Labs or mm -hmm. the Radium Serum in, uh, interface. It just won't be on the yes. Star Atlas website. Exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, similarly to how, for example, we were uh, showing people how to access uh, marketplaces for structures that a Stratlas team removed from their website just so that people don't yeah, buy them like at what they think yeah. are higher than uh, than real prices. Uh, just uh, We probably don't, don't need to go into that, but people can ask, ask me in Cantina about details of that if they don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now with this replacement of orders uh, from one marketplace to another marketplace, Stratlas team decided that it's a good time to rebalance those orders. Just to explain what was going on before was whenever they release a ship, they release uh, already for, for a long time portion of supply on USDC market and portion of supply on Atlas market at some prices that are equivalent to USDC prices 
at the time of the listing. Yep. So, for example, at the time of the listing, um, Atlas is uh, at 10 cents and they put order to sell ships that they put to sell at $400 on USDC market. They put it to sell for 1,000 Atlas on right. Atlas market. Yeah, that's right. Sa that's right. Same USDC equivalent that's price, right. but different market. And they kept those orders as Atlas token was going down. Partially, it's related to, uh, to bear market. Partially, it's related to uh, just emissions and vesting of private sales. But in the end, we know that uh, Atlas price went down. And as a result of this price going down, uh, those orders that were not repriced, none of them actually were from developers, yeah. uh, they stayed at 1,000 Atlas. And if your Atlas is more like 1 cent instead of 10 cents, now that 1,000 Atlas is now more like Ten dollars instead of hundred dollars. Yeah. So they yeah. still have a sell order for hundred dollars on USDC market, but uh, Atlas market sell order is is in such case uh, a significantly cheaper value. Um, and correspondingly, people were going to buy those. Now this uh, presence of such significantly lower priced ships, in my view, drove pricing of all of the ships essentially down yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. just because ship earnings are based on WAP for score. And even if you have some, apart from some irregularities among ships, in general, you have quite a lot of ships and you may find similar ship that is in the category of this go to wave that has uh, some supply on Atlas that was uh, put on the market long time ago at significantly different Atlas prices. So in such case, one would go for newer ship that is significantly lower priced instead of... And so for people to sell those now older ships that do not have this feature, um, they would need to price them lower as well just if they actually want to sell that ship because otherwise people would just go to buy similar ship uh, that is significantly cheaper. So in my view, that drove price and fall of the ships down. Now, with this move to new marketplace, they will be repricing all of the ships in line with their USDC prices. So for example, for that, just staying within that example of 1000 Atlas ship uh, that was put initially uh, at an equivalent of $100 that went down to $10. Now. now they will remove its listing for 1000 Atlas and on the new marketplace, they will put it at 10,000 Atlas just to have, again, equivalent price to 100 USDC. So now what this means is that we have a lot of supply being taken down from the market and being repriced at significantly higher Atlas price, which removes this uh, significant discounts from those developer orders. Now, in my view, it also will affect all other ships that people were putting out because if you were putting it, um, you if you were selling your ship cheaper just because developers have the their ship uh, at cheap levels, and now they don't have that, well, then why would you sell uh, try to yeah, sell your ship, ship at seventy percent discount? Maybe if you bought it at let's say at WAP or at fifty percent of WAP. Maybe you will put it at significantly smaller discount now yeah. uh, to try to sell. Yeah. So um, this means that ships that are currently on the market, and until this change goes in effect on 21st, they ha had a significant discount um, on the ships uh, ver versus the way ships will be sold by developers on 21st. Yeah. I think uh, no. there's, a, there's a few, sorry to interrupt you there. I think there's a few um, implications of this that I think people need to understand, right? So if you're still on the old marketplace, which is the Serum marketplace, and you leave your ships there, your ship that was a thousand Atlas um, is now going to be selling for like 10,000 Atlas and someone's just going to go ahead and buy it, right? So uh, my message yeah. that I left out uh, last video was for people to just remove your ships if you're not intending to sell it within the next a week or something. Just take it out from the marketplace at the moment and then just wait for the repricing of the ships to, to get more stability. Would you say that's yeah. fair advice? Uh, yes, it's a fair advice. Like in general, expectation would be 
compared to, let's say, when the news came out, because now we had some market moves that we'll get into. But at the time the news came out, it it was pretty, um, uh, I was saying that I expect ship prices to move up yep, uh, which they have. as a result yeah. of this move. And people trying to get now discounted ship because, well, your next, your next thought is, well, I know the ship is at one price right now. It will be at higher price on 21st. So I probably would want to get it. Yep. Now, those ships, those discounted ships are mostly on Atlas market. So you need to get Atlas to buy those discounted ships. So in such case, you want to buy Atlas. And so we recommended people to buy Atlas um, not as non-financial advice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, uh, le- let me fix it. We did not recommend people to buy Atlas. We said that in our view, it's not a bad idea, but depending on your own circumstances, you may choose what to do, whatever. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, we suggested it. <laughs> we, we, we said that this may be a good idea. And what we saw as a result was Atlas going up Go close up. to 50%. <laughs> it, it, it did not happen initial, uh, initially, which, which was surprising. Like in, in initial start was actually pretty slow. It was more like up 10%. Yeah. Well, it takes time for the news to go around yeah. and other decks to spread the news between themselves and say, oh, yes, we're on it now. Um, so I think that there should be a little bit of lag. Um, yeah, probably when you made your video and people watched it, only then a market reacted because people now knew uh, that this is happening. So yep. thank you <laughs> <laughs> for Hopefully, dissemination. Of I wonder if you had like a 10x long on Atlas at the moment when that when you when you found that info. Hmm. Uh, no, I ju- no, I don't. I don't actually trade with leverage because uh, leverage is really the only way, way to kill yourself in crypto market. That's true. That's uh, true. Everyone, stay yeah. away from leverage. It's super dangerous. Uh, I'm not saying to stay away. People just need to be aware. It's a tool. It's just, it, it's a tool. It's a tool that I personally don't feel comfortable comfortable with playing. But there are people who are. Yeah. And they, if they are aware of the risks, they they can play it. Uh, but, uh, so, but yes, I did buy Spot Atlas uh, in numbers <laughs> nice and you are in a little tidy profit um uh, i guess nice. thank you what do you like, can i ask very personal question what are you going to do with that atlas um so i bought ships i bought two ballads oh i, I bought some other ships so yeah it's... very nice very nice. Um, nice so now we know you have two ballads i'm going to look on the blockchain and see if i can find the wallet with two ballads and i'm going to find you <laughs> <laughs> all right um so we're, we're slowly running out of time here um, so, uh, fun, uh, fun cracker. I'll come back to you. Uh, four to six um, announcements have uh, uh, will be coming out soon. We know we're expecting a few product releases from Star Atlas. We're expecting a showroom alpha. Uh, not maybe not a, a downloadable client. I'm not actually sure, but maybe some kind of gameplay. Uh, maybe ship flight, something like that. Where marketplace is coming soon. Uh, Atlas, uh, sorry, the Polis DAO staking. Right? Am I missing anything for four to six? What else are we expecting? Oh, uh, referral system. Referral um, system. Yep. Will be introduced, but that that's it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. No. And of course, I forget about the graphical novel, the comic. Ah, book. yes, yes, the graphic novel. So if you were watching this now, I actually had an interview with Tim, McB- Tim McBurn. Uh, so go ahead and watch that. And he was really interested in any feedback that we can give him for the um, novels because it's up to us, the community, right, to steer where he sh- where he should take the novel. Awesome. So we've got a few uh, announcements coming up. Can I get your general thoughts about what you're particularly most excited about? Uh, maybe Funcracker? Do you like the marketplace more? Are you excited for the Polis DAO? What has the most implications? Oof. Uh, um, all of them, in a way. Uh, the, the marketplace will be uh, super important to onboard new members. Yep. Uh, right? Seamless. It will make every, the whole process easier. So I'm excited for that because it's a necessary uh, uh, improvement. Yep. Uh, the Polis DAO I'm curious about or also interested in because it will take some Polis of the market. Yes. Uh, so I'm very curious what will happen with that. Yep. You can uh, lock your Polis for five years and get like voting weight. So uh, taking all indeed. that circulating Polis out of circulation and locking it away. What could that do yeah. to price? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but of course the showroom, yeah, I mean, that, that we the finally, get, that, that's actually the only really gameplay related thing that we'll get. Uh, and I'm very curious how people experience that. And um, 
to be able, but also personally to just see my own ships in there, right? And walk around them yeah. and walk through them if possible. And I mean, it will be a nice thing to do. So uh, I, I really like all three aspects. It's interesting that they, in the end, all came together to the yeah. same period of time where they will be released. Um, and the free flight that you mentioned, which will come probably after October, in October at the earliest. Um, yeah, that, that, that I think is when, when it really starts to live because the Unreal showroom it will be nice to just look at the ships Something for tangible, one or two yeah. times. Yeah. But that's it until perhaps multiplayer and until perhaps the free flight uh, when it really starts to uh, become more engaging. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, Prometheus, what can I get your thoughts? What are you most excited about for 426? Yeah, I, uh, my expectations now are that they will release um, marketplace and um, police staking. I don't expect actually um, this uh, you, the, yes, I, I no, no, I mean, um, uh, show, showroom pre, pre alpha showroom. I don't expect it to come out uh, on photo six. I think it they will probably release it one or two weeks later, yeah, right. Um, or maybe like a video first and then the downloadable, downloadable yeah, ma maybe there will be some media, but yeah. uh, it sounded like they, they need. To, to to finish up some stuff there so maybe it's not uh for to six uh, release uh, we'll see um so now between marketplace and police staking um both of them are significant and you really covered uh the reasons why so I, no, no sense to repeat the same stuff um both i interesting i'm still here for the gameplay yeah so i'm actually waiting for screen yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably the oh yeah. I think that will give us the most impact short term for us because we wanna we want something to play, uh, something on the browser that I can log in and see my ships and um, you know go around the movement. And we've seen the timeline um, that they've been publishing on the roadmap, and they seem to be getting close to it as well. Do you have any further insight on it? Uh, no, still still expectation. My expectation is the end of this year, maybe beginning of next year. Nice. Okay. That's not too long. Yeah. Six months. We've waited a, a year Q4, so far. Probably more the end of Q4 is also what I yeah. Yeah, end of Q4. Yeah. Um, that 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 being said, you know, game development still takes a while. We might get something uh, mm -hmm. that time, and then after that, it'll be another six months. We'll get another big major update, something like that. Um, all right, gentlemen. Sure. Um, we'll think about ending it up. I'll give the floor to you if you have any last words to any Afians that are watching that are celebrating their one year anniversary as an Afian. A fun cracker, do you have any words to anyone watching for us? Happy one year anniversary, Yay. guys and girls. Happy, yes. one year. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks for being with us and uh, looking forward to many more of these. Yes. Yeah. Um, fun and now, thanks again, Metaverse, uh, for taking the time uh, to do the interview with us. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure as always. Prometheus, any last words for uh, anyone as well? Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. It's fun and let's continue to have fun and talk Star Atlas in FA Discord. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, guys, this has been Metaverse Explorer, uh, Fun Cracker, and Prometheus celebrating AFIA's number one birthday. Um, we're one year old and we have uh, at least 10 years more to go, in my opinion. Um, all right, <laughs> sure. that, that's it for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.